Please remember this is the day that you almost caught. Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> That is Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean. This week it was reported that Disney is looking to reboot the franchise that's already earned four and a half billion dollars worldwide. But the author of a new book says the real history of pirates is just as compelling as the stories on the big screen. Tony DeCopel is here with more. Tony, good morning. Good morning. Pirates were based in the Caribbean. Pirates like Captain Morgan. Yes, that Captain Morgan. I think you may have heard of him. But they also lived throughout the American colonies in the years before independence, and their legacy and presence there can be felt to this day. Along the waterfront in Salem, Massachusetts, yacht owners hoist a familiar black flag. While nearby, visitors linger at a museum for the men who once sailed under the skull and crossbones. This is the archetypal pirate. This is probably a combination of Blackbeard and every other myth that you could put together. <laughs> we've got the peg leg, we've got the hook for a hand, we've got the eye patch. After years of researching pirates, author Eric J. Dolan has come around to a theory about why so many Americans seem to love them. Perhaps there's something exciting about the anarchy of going out in the open ocean, making your own way, plundering at will, drinking when you can. I mean, there's an exciting element to it. You think? The reality, unfortunately, was not quite as exciting. In his new book, Black Flags, Blue Waters, Dolan tries to set the record straight. So no walking the plank. No walking the plank. No hooks. No hooks that I'm aware of. No peg legs that you're aware of. No peg legs. Very few eye patches. Yes. Were they burying treasure? No. Burying treasure is another enormous myth. He decided to write the book after pitching the idea to his kids. And immediately their eyes lit up. They got totally excited and they said, Dad, you have to write about pirates. Kids raised, of course, on pirate tales like Goonies, Hook, and Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow may be a myth, but Dolan digs up a real history that sparkles much the same. A story of what you might call American pirates, born, bred, and even celebrated here in the 1600s. So early American colonialists were fans of pirates. Absolutely, they were fans of pirates because those pirates were the fathers, sons, and brothers of the people in the colonies. He says these pirates from modern America sailed for the Indian Ocean, where they'd attack ships traveling between India and the Red Sea ports of Jeddah and Mocha. They'd attack these Mughal ships, and the colonists welcomed them with open arms because they were attacking, quote unquote, heathens and infidels, Muslims, halfway around the world, and bringing that treasure back to the American colonies. Other pirates commuted between the East Coast and the Caribbean. Many pirates came to the colonies with their riches and settled there and became upstanding members of the community. Later, no, really? Yeah, oh yeah, a lot of them, yeah, because money talks back then as today. Pirates were plundering mainly Spanish ships in the Caribbean. They enriched the colonies at a time when the colonial life was rather severe and currency starved. And most of this piracy happened without as much bloodshed as you might think. Essentially, pirates were successful because intimidation worked. They would run up the Jolly Roger or the Black Flag, and most merchant ships, instead of fight, would surrender and give over their wealth. But in reality, Dolan says, pirates risked their lives for what were typically paltry sums. Most of these pirates didn't have a lot of treasure to show for all their efforts. So pirates are sort of like gamblers going into a casino. They have an over expectation of success and an under expectation of failure. Most of them ended up losers, even Blackbeard. He's somebody who is held out as the archetypal pirate, but his career was only about a year, a year and a half long. He didn't end up with a huge amount of treasure. And in the end, his head was severed by <laughs> Lieutenant Robert Maynard and hanged from the bowsprit of his sloop. Sam Bellamy's limited luck is on display at the Pirate Museum on Cape Cod. They plundered a ship called the Witta, which had a huge amount of gold and silver on board because it had just sold 500 slaves in Port Royal, Jamaica. Their ship went down off the coast of Cape Cod in 1717. 
killing more than 100 men and scattering treasure on the ocean floor until it was found by an underwater explorer in 1984. Certainly the greatest treasure find that's related to pirates in the history of the world. Piracy in the Atlantic peaked in the early 1700s, a so-called golden age when as many as 4,000 sea robbers plied the ocean blue. When they stepped up attacks on English ships, however, the Royal Navy cracked down. And this time, the colonies joined in. There were 68 hangings of pirates from Charleston to Boston in the 17-teens. And from a broader perspective, there were probably more than 400 pirates that were hanged. So essentially, it became a slow war of attrition because so many people were after them. Pirates lost that war, of course, but they rose again in our imaginations. The earliest popular account is from 1724, Charles Johnson's A General History of the Pirates. Other books would add to the allure. And then, of course, when Hollywood got a hold of piracy, Arr. especially when uh, Robert Newton played Long John Silver and Blackbeard in Disney movies, that's when we started to get our true image of pirates. Today, pirates are the face of sports franchises and still rank among the most popular Halloween costumes, perhaps letting some people live the pirate's life, but not Eric J. Dolan. Camaraderie, friendship, adventure, right. what else do you need here? Well, now to hear you put it that way, I want to become a pirate. Exactly. <laughs> I love the mythology as much as the next person, but I did not find anything romantic about it, except and the legends that were woven long after the pirates disappeared from history's stage. Shiver me timbers. Shiver me timbers. <laughs> <laughs> Dolan says he did find something worthwhile in the way pirate ships operated as democracies. Captains were picked by popular vote, all pirates were equal, and there was even an early form of disability pay for pirates injured wow. on the job. Wow. Wow. You come across a Sam Lord no. in Barbados, and two of his progeny, actually one in America and one in Canada, I've actually met. Can you really? believe that? Pirates. Yes, Real he pirates. has lots of money. He has a castle you know, in Barbados. Arr. The history of pirates is based on the ones that were caught. I like to imagine that there are some who walked away with their money and we've never heard from them. Well, that yeah. may be one of them right there. I'm shocked <laughs> to find out that Blackbeard just had a good publicist. <laughs> yeah. Shorter career than an NFL running back. <laughs> Thank you, Tony.